I have an honor today to uh, a man who's been working most of his life actually fighting for those rights. We have Congressman Walter Jones here, who is beyond party, he's an American, who understands his oath and understands the power of the individual being protected by that. It's an honor to call him a friend, an honor to come up here and speak. Thank you very much. Selling that Rick, no, thank you for the introduction and to every one of you here today that believes in the Constitution, whether it be the state constitution or the federal constitution, thank you so much for being here today. I hope and pray that we build our numbers. My brief comments are going to be about two issues. One, going to war without declaring the war based on the Constitution. Ron Paul and I became very good friends when I came out against the Iraq war in the year 2005. He did not vote for the resolution to give President Bush to go into Iraq, I did. I found out later that we were misled with the intelligence and we were misled intentionally. That in itself, in my opinion, is a violation of the Constitution and there should have been an impeachment of uh, President Bush, but it didn't happen. I have put in House Resolution 3 that says that any president, not the president, but any president that bypasses Congress to send our young men and women to war to give their life, their legs, without a declaration can be impeached. I hope that maybe you will inform your friends of this H.R. Resolution 3 because I introduced the bill a year ago. If you remember that Secretary Panetta was before the Senate Armed Services Committee and Senator Sessions asked him, would you come to Congress and ask Congress to declare war? His comment was, we would first go to our friends overseas and then come to you. I saw that. When I heard that on the radio driving home to North Carolina, I said, to hell with that. That's when I put in last year HCON Resolution 137. I could not get my own side, the Republican side, to give us a hearing on it. I actually met with Eric Cantor and asked for a hearing. I said, Eric, I don't want to move the bill, but for God's sakes, what does Congress do when it commits our young men and women to die for this country and we don't follow the Constitution? <laughs> We're supposed to be the Republican Party that pontificates about the Constitution, but we don't follow the Constitution. So I ask you, to please think about HCON Resolution 3. It's been reintroduced, and that's the number three. And I'm going to do everything I can to beat the drums to have a hearing on the whole issue of war powers. I've seen so many broken bodies at Walter Reed and Bethesda. It's now been consolidated to one hospital known as Walter Reed at Bethesda. I've seen the amputated legs, the arms. I've been to the funerals. This country does not, in my opinion, properly respect its military. You would not send these people to war unless you declared war that's based on the Constitution. And when Mr. Obama bypassed Congress and bombed Libya, yes, Gaddafi was an evil man and he needed to be removed, but not by another country. His people should have wanted to do it. And the president, in my opinion, was wrong in bypassing Congress and making that decision on his own that we would bomb another country that we didn't like. Another issue that I have worked on for almost 18 years. In 1954, Lyndon Baines Johnson, United States Senator, introduced an amendment in the Republican-controlled Senate that the unintended consequences was is taking away the right of a spiritual leader in a church 
a mosque, a synagogue to speak freely about he, how he or she feels about a person who's in public life. In 1953, any minister, priest, or rabbi, or clerk in this country could speak freely about anyone in public life, could praise them or criticize them. But the Johnson Amendment took it away. I have reintroduced that bill as well. And I do believe that if we can galvanize people around this country on both the bills, we can get them through the House. And that is so important in Washington, whether you get it to the desk of a president, is to get the bill through the body that you serve in. I want to thank Dr. Brannon and everyone here that put together this event. Freedom matters, and the Constitution matters, and the oath to the Constitution, whether it be state or federal, is critical to freedom absolutely critical to freedom. Since we went into Iraq, and I found out that we were lied to by being at the funeral of Michael Bitts, United States Marine Sergeant, the second week that we were in Iraq, I started writing letters to all the families across America. We had nine soldiers and Marines killed last week in Afghanistan. We need to get the hell out of Afghanistan. I have signed over 10,840 letters to the families and extended families of those who have given their life in Iraq and Afghanistan. So this is my close. First, before the close, I want to thank you for being here today. Let's grow this number. This is a great number, but let's grow the number across the state of North Carolina. Ron Paul is going to be very active. He's putting together a 501c3 for to talk about the Constitution and the issue of war. I love Ron Paul. I love him because he understands when he's the only one in Washington, he votes no. God bless him for his commitment to the Constitution. My close is this. God, please bless our men and women in uniform. God, please bless the families of our men and women in uniform. God, in your loving arms, hold the families who've given a child dying for freedom in Afghanistan and Iraq. God, please bless the people here today who love the words that you planted in the minds of those who wrote the state and the federal constitution. What about our Second Amendment? God, let me say to you as well, please bless the House and Senate that we will do what is right protecting the Second Amendment of the American people and protecting the other principles in the Constitution. And God, even though I do not agree with President Obama, he is our president. God, please bless the president. Give him wisdom and strength. God, to do your will for the American people. And three times I will ask, God, please, God, please, God, please continue to bless America. Thank you.